Hi, I'm Susan Kellner of the Ontario Pesticide Education Program, here to go over Chapter 22, Pesticides in Food, of the Grower Pesticide Safety Course. There are about nine slides in the presentation, so it'll take us about 10 minutes to review. By the end of this lesson, you should be ready to define pesticide residue and maximum residue limit, identify the organizations who test for residues, list ways to prevent pesticide residues, Calculate spray dates based on pre-harvest intervals. Consumers are interested in knowing about pesticide residues that may be on their food. They also ask about residues on bedding or indoor plants, cut flowers, and sod. But in fact, over 95.7% of all food samples sampled had no detectable residue or residues below the Canadian maximum residue limits. And this was carried out by the National Chemical Residue Monitoring Program. And this is the data from the 2015-2016 report. And uh, as they uh, publish the reports, they'll be on the Canadian Food Inspection Agency website. So what is the maximum residue limit? maximum residue limit is the greatest amount of pesticide residue that is expected to remain in or on a food when the pesticide is used according to the label directions. And these residues are not harmful. Canada's MRLs are set by the Pest Management Regulatory Agency, Health Canada. They're published online on Health Canada's MRL database and set for each pesticide on each food crop in parts per million. <coughs> Here is the Maximum Residue Limit Database at Health Canada, and you can go on and search and look at the database. The chemical common name is here. The food commodity, strawberries. The Maximum Residue Limit Value stated here and what date it was established. So this was established on July the 9th of 2008. So Health Canada sets the science-based maximum residue limits allowed to ensure that food Canadians eat is safe. The MRLs are set for each pesticide crop combination and they're set well below the amount that would pose a health concern. Part per million, how can we envision a part per million? One part pesticide per one million parts food. Examples are in percentage, 0.0001%, a penny in 10,000, and one minute in two years. A very small amount. Who tests for residues? We have quite a few organizations that look after that for Canada, the PMRA, Pest Management Regulatory Agency, the CFIA, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, OMAFRA, our Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, and food processors also um, test for residues. And what did they look for? They look for residues greater than the maximum residue limit. They look for residues of unregistered pesticides. And they look for off-label residues. Okay, something that's not labeled for use on a particular crop and it's found on that particular crop. How can you prevent residues? Follow all label directions. Apply to the crops, the animals, the pests stated on the label directions at the stated growth stage. Use the pesticide rate stated on the label. Calibrate equipment to apply that rate accurately. So you're going to see and use these statements, label statements such as do not use more than three applications per season, do not apply within seven days of harvest for blueberries, allow a seven day interval between treatments. All these statements are on the label to allow the residues to below the maximum residue limit when you're using the product. So here's an example and this is in your book. Pesticide label. What is the earliest date, if you're using this product in this way, that this crop could be harvested? So 
So there's quite, quite a bit of detail on the label. Proper timing of application is critical with this product. Monitor for insect pests and treat at early interval stages. Interval, early larval stages. Apply no more than four applications per year. Rotate the application with other insecticides. The pre-harvest interval is three days. Apply at intervals of at least seven days. Do not feed crop refuse to livestock. Apply 0.5 liters per hectare in at least 400 liters of water to control the insect. So there's your pesticide rate and your sprayer application rate. And do not re-enter treated areas within the 12 hours. So that's your restricted entry interval. So your application, this is what's going to happen. You make your first application of this pesticide to the food crop on August the 2nd at 7 a.m. Here we are, August the 2nd, 7 a.m. You finish at 10 a.m. You plan to make three applications and those have to be seven days apart. Your next application will be the 9th and then the next application will be the 16th of August. So knowing that the pre-harvest interval is three days, what is the earliest date and time that this crop can be harvested for food use? Three days later, the earliest date would be August the 19th.